Hello there, so if you are watching this, this means you want to learn how to edit photos in Lightroom. And good news, you're in the perfect place as I'm going to show you how to do that in this video, step by step. Now, if you're new here, hello, my name is Audrianne from Live Snap Love, where I teach you how to master your camera and editing so you can beautifully capture your children, your family and the world around you. Now you will find links to extra resources for using Lightroom underneath this video, so be sure to check that out as well. But for now, let's dive into how to edit your photos in Lightroom. So before you can edit your photos in Lightroom, you'll need to have them in the Lightroom catalog. And you do that by importing your images. So to do this, you're going to need to be in the library module and just select that up here on the top right hand side. Then over here on the panel on the left, you're just going to go down and click on that import button. And that's going to open up the import dialog box. Now over here on the left hand side is the location where your images currently are, such as your memory cards. So you're going to select that. And then in here in the middle is which photos you want to import and you can check or uncheck that there. And then over here on the right hand side is where you want to save that photos to. So if you're importing from a memory card, where do you want to save them to? And you're going to select that here under destination. Now, obviously there is a lot more that you can do here and indeed that you should do here, but because I want to keep this focused on editing, that's all we'll cover here. We'll just need to now click on import and that is going to get your photos into the Lightroom catalog so you can start to edit them. So I'm just going to cancel that because I don't want to import those. But now that you have your images inside Lightroom, we can then get to work editing them. So to do this, we need to move from the library module over into the develop module. So just click on that develop tab on that top right of the screen and that will open up the develop module. Now I know when you first open this up, it can seem intimidating as there's so many panels and sliders and options. It's easy to get overwhelmed and just feel like doing an about turn, but don't worry, I'm going to walk you through it. So this panel here on the left, sorry, yes, left hand side of the screen is where you will find all your presets. Now, if you're not sure how to use presets in Lightroom, I do have uh, training for you. I will link to that underneath this video and you'll also see your history and your snapshots panel. Now, one thing to note here is that editing in Lightroom is non-destructive. So nothing is undoable. You can always go back a previous step or right back to how the image was when you imported it. So this means you can totally have fun editing your photos and don't have to worry about accidentally saving over your image or ruining it for life. So you can have a play and you can use this snapshots and history panel to go back in time. Over here on the right hand side is where all your editing tools are. So it starts with your histogram and then we have our local adjustments and then we have a number of panels here on the right hand side. Now, what's important to note here is that it really helps to have a workflow for editing your images in Lightroom. So you're not reinventing the wheel the whole time. Now, workflow sounds all fancy and complicated, but it's really not. It's just a series of steps that you work on on each image. Now, don't get me wrong. That does not mean carrying out the same edits each time. It's more that you're asking yourself a series of questions in a specific order and deciding whether that particular image needs that emit, edit, and if so, how much. So it's all in order. It has a specific flow, but that doesn't mean you do the same thing to each and every photo. Hope that makes sense. So there are three main phases to editing photos in Lightroom. You have your global clean adjustments, your global creative adjustments, and your local adjustments. And we want to follow that order when we're editing. So let's start with global and clean editing. Now these are just adjustments that affect your entire photo and it gives you a clean edit. I like to think of this as getting the perfect negative. In other words, getting the photo to look the way you wanted it to if you've been able to do that in camera. So the best place to start here is in the basic panel and you'll see this here on the right hand side. You just click on the triangle to open up any of these panels by the way. So just click on that to open that up. Now this is where you will find most of what you need but we will use a few other panels as well. 
but this panel here is where you're going to do the bulk of the work. This is where you are going to correct your white balance using these tools here at the top. So the dropper tool, the presets, and the temperature and tint sliders. Then you are going to work on the tones of your image. So you can lighten the image or darken the image. You can also add or reduce the contrast. You could bring back any highlights. So if there were clipped highlights, you can bring that back. You could also darken the shadows if you wanted, or you could lighten those. And you can also make sure that you set overall contrast with your white and your blacks slider. And then moving down, this is also where you can uh, enhance the texture in your image. This is great for uh, some landscape images and for macro style images, you can really increase the texture. You don't really want to do that on skin. Can you see what happens if I go too far with that? In some cases, actually, for portraits, you might actually want to do negative texture, or negative clarity in order to uh, smooth out the skin a little bit. But for different images, obviously, you're going to be able to do different things. DK slider is great for bringing back contrast on images that have a lot of flare and haze when you were shooting directly into the sun. And then you have vibrance and saturation, and this boosts the colors in your images. Now, they work slightly differently, each one. Uh, for skin tones, I do recommend that you use vibrant. It tends to not make the images too, or sorry, the skin tones too orange. If I move the saturation slider, you can see that that goes orange pretty quickly, whereas the same thing doesn't happen so much with the vibrant slider. So the basic panel is where you are going to do most of the work, but we're also going to use another couple of panels here, namely the uh, lens correction, detail and transform panel. So these ones here, details, we're going to apply overall sharpening. You're going to reduce any noise in your image to get rid of any grain. Lens corrections is where you can uh, fix any uh, lens profile, any chromatic aberration, which is that orange fringing, or sorry, orange or purple or green fringing on your photos. And you can also transform them. Useful if you're using wide angle and you want to kind of straighten the uh, lines in your image. And that should give us what I call, as I say, the perfect negative, where you get your images to a point that looks as though it was taken in camera, but it was a fantastic image that you took in camera. It's getting that perfect, perfect negative. And that's going to lay the foundation for everything else that you do from this point on. So you never, ever want to skip that um, because it's crucial for everything else that comes after it. Now, don't worry, you don't need to remember all of that. We do actually have an editing checklist in our free Lightroom starter kit. So you'll find a link to that underneath this video, and that is where you will find, uh, you'll get a guide to importing, you'll get a step-by-step -step editing checklist, you'll get an exporting cheat sheet and some presets to help you get started with editing. And you'll find a link to that underneath this video. It's totally free. Definitely recommend that you download that. But for now, let's move on to the next stage of our edits, and that's our global creative adjustments. And we do this to enhance a mood or a feeling or put our own style on an image or just add extra depth and dimension. So even if you like your photos to look natural, you'll still want to do some of these things for sure. Now, this will vary greatly from image to image as each image is unique. But again, we don't randomly do things here just because we saw it on somewhere, someone else's photo or in a video or in a preset. It's about looking at your image and seeing what it needs to make it shine. Now, for some, this could be converting to black and white. For others, it might be adding split toning. It could be changing or enhancing colors. As this is creative, it can be as prescriptive as your clean adjustments, where I can literally tell you how much to move a slider by. Uh, but there's definitely questions you should be asking yourself that will help guide you to the correct edits to make. Now, the panels we are going to use here are the tone curve, the HSL and color panel, split toning panel, and the effects panel. Now, the important thing to note here is that these are global adjustments. In other words, they affect, affect the whole image. So if you use split toning to add warmth to the shadows, it's going to apply that to all the shadows in the image. And in fact, if I just go at to this HSL one. And let's just say I wanted to kind of deepen the color of this a little bit. Let me just go to saturation, for example. 
And as I move that slider, you can see that it is deepening the color here. It's also deepening the color here as well. So it's applying that to the global image. Everything, every red in this image is going to have that applied. So all these panels are doing global adjustments. So make sure that if you're making adjustment, check around the rest of your image and see what uh, other effects, maybe unintended, that it may have. So as I say, there's lots you can do here. Tone curve, this is where we can play with contrast. You can also click here and play with the individual color channels. A lot of people don't know that you can do that. Um, down here in the HSL, this is where you can adjust the hue, saturation, and luminance of all the individual colors in your images. Split toning is when you can add different colors to the highlights and from the shadows. Lots of fun you can have here. There's definitely some uh, ones you can use here that are quite prescriptive and they'll work for varying images, but uh, that's a good one to use as well. Um, and as I say, you can go in here to the effects panel as well, and this is where you can add some vignetting to your image, which can be useful if you want to draw your viewer's eye into the center of the frame. There is another way of doing that as well. So that is what we are going to do for our global creative adjustments. So we've done our global clean adjustments. We've now gone our global creative adjustments. Now we're going to go more local because the final stage of editing your photos is to carry out your local adjustments. This is where we further fine tune our image to pull our viewer's eye around the frame or lead it to what's important. Now these are very targeted adjustments that only affect a small area of your image. So unlike when we added that uh, HSL and we moved that slider, it applied the whole image, when we use the local adjustments, it's only gonna apply it to a small portion of your image. So you will find all your local adjustments in this toolbar above all the uh, different panels there, all that different sections. So that has all of the local tools. Now, you might not use all of these, but this is where you will find your adjustment brush, which is this one here, the graduated filter, which is this one here, the radial filter, which is this one here. Um, this is your red eye reduction. You generally won't use that unless you're using uh, flash. This is your clone and heal tool and this is your crop tool. So I'm not gonna go into how to use a crop tool. We actually have a training on that. I will link to that again underneath this video. Clone and heal, this is when you can remove any distractions in the frame, or if you were doing a portrait, you might use that to clear up any pimples or even remove uh, under eye circles, that kind of thing. Uh, graduated filter, I won't, I'll just click on it so I can show you, but um, this is when you can actually click and pull down and you can have it affect just one portion of the frame. So if I were actually just to bring the exposure down, can you see it only applies it to uh, a portion of the frame rather than the whole thing? I'm gonna close that. Uh, radio filter works in the same way, but more in a circle. So if I do that, create a circle, and then I pull down the exposure again, you can see that it uh, creates a more kind of spotlight effect on our image. And we can use that in different ways as well. And obviously you can change any of these sliders here. And what that's allowing you to do is to get really uh, targeted, as I said, with your adjustments. The one you'll find yourself using all the time is your adjustment brush. And this is where you can brush on different settings. So if I'm just gonna take that back to the beginning, just gonna do this really quite wild so you can see, but I can actually brush on exposure in just one part of the image. So as opposed to it affecting the whole photo, I can just affect a small area of the image and that allows you to get really precise. This is also where you would do any portrait enhancements, things like smoothing out the skin, giving rosy cheeks, making your eyes pop. Uh, so we would do all that here in our local adjustments as well. Now, once you've done all that, you've done your global clean adjustments, you've done your global creative adjustments, and you've done your local adjustments, then it is time to share that beautifully edited image with the world. Now, what is important to note here is that Lightroom never touches the original of your image. So what you're actually working on here is a preview. 
In order for that edit to take effect, you need to export the image. Now, obviously, exporting, again, it could be a whole lesson in itself, and I'll link to some resources underneath here on that. But just to keep this really simple for this one, if you just right-click on your image and then go down to Export, and then select export, it's going to open up a export dialog box. And this is where you can choose your location, your naming, the file settings, image sizing, whether you want to watermark it. And that's all going to change based on whether you want to share that on Instagram or Facebook, or you want to get a high quality print. So you're going to do different things here. But once you've done that, you're just going to click on export. I'm going to click on cancel since I don't want to do that. But do remember that if you download that Lightroom starter kit, you're going to get a guide to exporting there as well, along with all that other goodies that we mentioned, the step-by-step -step editing checklist and that guide to importing. Also said you get some presets. And what I want to show you just very quickly here is that using a preset can be a good way of starting to learn some of the things that Lightroom does. So I'm just going to click on one at random, uh, black and white one. And if I just go over to the panel here, you can see that as opposed to the sliders being at zero as they were, they've all been moved by magic by the preset. But you can actually go into that panels and see what the preset has done. So it can be a great way of just learning the various things, what things have done to your image. So as I said, you get four uh, presets in that Lightroom starter kit. Download those as well, get them into Lightroom and start using them. And that's another great way of being able to play with your photos and see the different editing steps. So that's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do leave a comment below letting me know what you thought or if there is anything you would like to know more about and I could make that the focus of my next video. So that's it from me today. I will see you guys next week. Thanks for being here. Bye for now.